So, uh, hello and uh, welcome to Fan Formula. It is uh, the day after Monaco, so uh, it's also the Glam Fan Formula edition. And this, in being Nottingham, is the only thing I have that's Glam. So this, 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 this will have to do. So uh, yeah, the Shirley Bassey yard out. So uh, yeah, that's hopefully this week I'll actually say the questions right and not get any words wrong. Let's see if I can crack it. So. Question one. In FP3, we saw Pastor Maldonado bump ties with Sergio Perez and in response was awarded a 10-place grid penalty. What was your view on the incident and the resulting penalty? Um, from what I saw of FP3, uh, Maldonado did deserve a penalty for it, really. Um, the only issue, again, is like I said a few weeks ago with the FIA, they're not very consistent. You know, Hamilton a few weeks ago, as much as I don't like Hamilton, fuel irregularity, he's excluded to the back of the grid. Pastor Maldonado did a bit of dangerous driving, 10 places, and yet Schumacher only got a 5 place grid penalty for crashing in, in the race and then later on brake testing centre. There's just not a lot of consistency there with the FIA and their rulings of how harsh penalties are. Maldonado's was definitely a deserved penalty, but in the grand scheme of things, I think the penalty system definitely needs some work. Question two. Qualifying saw Sebastian Vettel not set a lap time and through, and through this benefit, oh, benefited from a choice of tyres in the race. Do you think that this rule should be changed with penalties enforced if a driver or team do not set a time in Q3? Yeah, I definitely do. I think it's... This old adage is gone now of, you know, oh, we're saving tyres for the race. It's a bit dull because more and more teams are now deciding not to do this. Um, and so instead of getting 10 cars going around in FP in uh, Quali 3, we're getting four cars sitting in the pits and it's a six-car six six shootout and it's a bit dull. So I do think, you know, maybe we should have quali tyres, race tyres, that kind of thing, because it's getting a bit uh, ridiculous now with what's going on. Um, and also as well, like Vettel only set, I think, a sector time just so he would get in front of anyone who didn't go out at all. And that, I'm st it's just getting a bit, it's just getting a little bit silly now, really. Question three. God, this feather barrow is hot. It is too hot. Question three. A slow pit stop for Hamilton being hit on the head. <laughs> Wait, hang on. I need to reread that. A slow pit stop for Hamilton. He was hit on the head with numbers falling off his pit board. And a lack of communication regarding Sebastian's pace left Lewis Hamilton frustrated with the race. Do you think this will affect his upcoming contract renewal? And what do you think his options are aside from McLaren? Well, firstly, I wasn't watching the race at home. I was in Birmingham yesterday with uh, with Vicky, who F1 obsessive on, on Twitter. And, yeah, we I'm quite gutted in a really cruel sadistic way that I miss Hamilton getting hit on the head with his pit board numbers <laughs> because that would have been a treat for my eyes but his options are simple right he's been with McLaren for five years now yes they raised him from little and you know he's been in a McLaren family bore him into that team but he's won one world championship should he go should he stay I'm not really bothered He's not a driver that concerns me in the slightest. However, the issue is, where would he fit in if he did leave McLaren? And McLaren is still good. They've just had a bad year, to be honest. And he's still... Hamilton's been still quite consistent. So I don't understand why he'd want to leave McLaren, really. Because Jensen's got a five-year deal, and Jensen's not doing... Well, actually, we don't talk about Jensen. He did a bit bad yesterday. But you know what I mean? I just... I don't see where he'd go, because I don't think he would go to Red Bull, I don't think he'd go to Ferrari, and I don't think he'd go to Mercedes, and they're like the four big teams, so where would he go, apart from, you know, lower down the grid? It just doesn't make sense for him to logistically move. And also, he's a quite strange one in terms of driver, of personality, and there's, there's all a lot of factors going on that would take a lot of time to sort, and I just don't think he should actually leave McLaren, I think he should just stay there. Bonus question, do you think we should still be racing at Monaco when overtaking is clearly important in modern F1? Well, yesterday's race was dry, to be honest. It was a bit of a procession, which was disappointing, really. Um, 
and also there was like the five cars at the end and just nobody went for it nobody like did a takuma sa and the indy 500 just went for it you know they just didn't do it and it, it was such a disappointment and it's even more of a disappointment that the rain came back half an hour after the race finished because oh that was just so gutting because it could have been so much more spiced up i still think we should race at monaco i just think now we've got the drs and now we've got tracks we can overtake that's that's the thrill of it you need some overtaking and there just wasn't any. Yet in the GP2s and the GP3s, there was. So I just think the F1 drivers were being very, very conservative. And that's great for them, great for their points, but it was pants for the fans. There was nothing really to cheer about. And to be honest, Monaco was a massive disappointment when, when the giraffe went out anyway. For me, giraffe went on the first lap. Maldonado went for Vicky on the first lap. We had no one left, really. A um, disappointment for Jensen, so we weren't happy. So it was a bit of a poor Monaco for us, really, which was, you know, a bit gutting. But, uh, yeah, that's that's it, really. That's uh, this week's uh, fan formula. It's a bit of a short one, really. Yeah. So uh, next week, there's no race. We're in Canada in two weeks, which should be exciting. Jensen's good track. Um, you know... Wall of Champions, so many good things about Canada, and even better, it's a nice start time. It's like five in the afternoon over here, which is amazing because you know you, can, you still have your day, and Formula One doesn't take it all over, so it's really nice. So, uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week for another fan formula, and then I'll probably catch you the week after for the Canadian fan formula. So, uh, yeah, uh, everything you need to know Twitter and blogs, it's all in the box. And uh, yeah, I will see you next week. Um, bye.